What's going on guys, it's Chris Corey with So Mifa, that's me in the middle of sofa, back with another build video. And in this build video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to build this little guy. It's completely silent, 4K ready, and as you can see, small form factor. I'm codenaming this one Project Kyrie, so stay tuned to see how I put it together. All right guys, before I get started on the build video, I just would like to throw in an ad and let you guys know that I have some of these available in my Amazon store. This is the Beho Sedeco Air Keyboard. This is my favorite, hands down, my favorite keyboard mouse combo to use uh, with my HTPC. And this is the one that gets the most use. If you would, just check out my Amazon store and check out the video I did with this against the Re i8 Plus, which was the top selling keyboard in the keyboard mouse combination in the Amazon store. And for me, to me, this really, really outperformed that one. So it's a good buy at around $20. So make sure you check out the link in the description and pick one of these up if you're in the market for an air keyboard. Now let's get into the build. All right guys, so let's go ahead and jump into the pros and cons of this build. This build is 4K at 60 Hertz ready. So you won't have a problem playing Netflix at 4K or YouTube at 4K or other content at 4K. This thing is ready for 4K content and it goes all the way up to 60 Hertz. This build is completely silent. You don't have to worry about any sound at all, any moving parts. I'm using this as an HTPC and you don't want loud fan noises to disturb you from watching uh, movies or TV shows are just sitting at idle and, and being loud so you don't have to worry about any noise at all from this build. This PC has a small form factor so it can easily fit into a backpack. It's about the size of a textbook so you can take it on the go. It's easy to move from room to room so you won't have a problem with carrying this thing around anywhere. This guy sips power. At idle, it pulls about nine watts from the wall. At full load, about 25 watts. So you don't have to worry about this thing running up your energy bill. It is really, really efficient. This thing is surprisingly powerful. I was surprised by the performance that I got from this guy. With web surfing, there was little lag. Um, I could do some gaming. I played Cuphead at 1080p, 60 hertz. I even got some Rocket League in at 720p at low settings, and it ran pretty smoothly. This is a great build for 2D gaming and emulators. Uh, you can probably start at around Dreamcast and work your way back with the emulators, but it's great for that. I played some Nintendo 64 games. I didn't have a problem with that. So I would say start between Dreamcast and Nintendo 64 and kind of work your way back when it comes to emulators. Under 400 bucks. Now when I say under 400 bucks, I'm talking about my parts. I really didn't include operating system in here because some people may not want to put Windows 10 on here, which I will be installing, which is $100. So this is a sub $500 bill for me, but maybe you can find Windows cheaper uh, maybe you can find it for free. I really don't trust those sources at all, but a lot of people have been using them, um, especially in the YouTube community. So uh, a sub $500 bill for me, and this thing was priced at $392 the last time I checked. So it's pretty inexpensive, and it's entry level for someone who's looking for a small form factor or an HTPC bill. Now for the cons of this bill, there is thermal throttling. When you have a system with no fans, it is passively cool. You have to expect things to heat up and it does with this bill. The good news is that it took me about an hour at full load, around an hour and 10 minutes at full load to actually get this thing to throttle. And I couldn't imagine being in too many situations where uh, the CPU, the entire system will be maxed out at full load for that length of time. So I don't have a big problem with the throttling. If it happens sooner, that may be a problem, but 
an hour, an hour and 10 minutes, that, those were great results for me. So no HDR. This build doesn't have HDR and I'm okay with that right now because my current TV in my living room uh, doesn't have HDR. It is 4K ready, but it doesn't have HDR at all. And I'm trying to wait for a little while to see if this is something that's a gimmick or if it's something that's gonna stick around. I've been watching YouTube videos about it. Some say it's a good thing, some say it's not so great, but uh, it's surprising that I can watch YouTube videos that shows me the difference between HDR and SDR on my SDR TV, and I can actually see the difference on an SDR TV. So that doesn't make sense to me, but anyway, maybe next year these motherboards and chipsets will be updated and we can get HDR. All right, let's get into the parts. At the center of this build is the ASRock J5005 ITX. It has a CPU on board that is passively cooled by a small heat sink. The CPU is efficient yet powerful Gemini Lake Pentium Silver J5005, which has four cores and a base frequency of 1.5 gigahertz and a burst frequency of 2.8 gigahertz. Four megabytes cache and has a energy sipping 10 watt TDP. This CPU uses Intel UHD graphics 605 that is 4K at 60 hertz capable. This motherboard has HDMI 2.0 plus legacy D-Sub and DVI-D ports. USB 3.1 and USB 2.1 and 7.1 channel audio with optical SPDIF out port. I'm going to be installing the motherboard into a tiny Morex 557 case. It has plenty of ventilation and two USB front ports. It has room for a 2.5 inch drive and four 40 millimeter case fans. It also comes with rubber feet and this amounting hardware if you want to mount it to the back of a monitor. I'm gonna install eight gigabytes of G-Steel Ripjaw DDR4 2400 sodium memory, a Samsung 850 EVO 250 gigabyte 2.5 inch SSD. You can go with the Samsung 860 EVO, uh, which is a little cheaper and has a little better performance. And for Wi-Fi card, I'm gonna be installing the Intel 7260 NGW dual band Wi-Fi card with Bluetooth 4.0 and antenna powered by the mini box 80 watt pico psu and a 12 volt 4a 48 watt ac dc power adapter from led wholesalers and for os i will be installing windows 10 home for tools i will be using a small and large screwdriver and a small socket wrench with 40 millimeter and 60 millimeter sockets for antenna and power port this is optional because nuts can be tightened by hand, but your antenna may be a little bit loose and anti-static wristband. So let's get started with this build. Remove the top panel from the case. Put on an anti-static wristband and clip it to the drive cage and set the case aside. Remove the motherboard from the box and anti-static wrapping. Leave the foam under the board. Place the motherboard on top of the closed box. To install memory, pull the locking arms out. Align the notch on the memory with the notch on the slot and press the memory into the slot. It helps to place your hands underneath the motherboard and foam pad and press down for more leverage. Repeat for additional memory stick and memory slot. To install a Wi-Fi card, remove screws from M.2 mounting screw holes. 
align card notches with the notches on the slot and slide the card into the slot at a 45 degree angle or lower. Once card is snapped into slot, press down and lower card and replace the screw. Place motherboard aside and grab the case. Remove the drive cage while keeping the clamp from the wristband attached. Next install motherboard back plate, but first make sure that all tabs are bent back and out of the way. I install antenna wires first to make things easier. Just put bolts in their holes, slide on washers, and screw on the nuts using hands. After using hands to screw, use wrench to tighten while holding the back side of the bolts. Align back plate with cutout and snap into place. Make sure all wires are out of the way for motherboard install. Because this case is so small, the motherboard install was kind of tricky. It is a very tight fit, but the key is to make sure the motherboard back ports are aligned with the back plate openings. Then try to gently lower the motherboard in place while moving cables from under the motherboard. Be careful not to press down too hard on the motherboard while lowering it into place. Try to avoid touching sensitive components on the motherboard like transistors. Align motherboard with case screw holes and screw the motherboard down. Next, install the Pico power supply by aligning it with the ATX power connector. Pressing down, this should snap into place. Then place the power port in the opening and screw down with nut. Tighten with the wrench. Next, install the power button and power LED cables from the case into the motherboard power button and power LED headers. See motherboard manual for correct orientation. Next, install front USB cables from the case into the motherboard USB 2.0 header. See the motherboard manual to locate the header and the correct orientation. Next, attach Wi-Fi antenna wires to the Wi-Fi card. Align port with wires, press down, and they should snap on. To install SSD, attach SATA cables to the port on the SSD. Attach SATA power cable from the Pico PSU to the SSD. Next, attach the SATA cable to the SATA port. Then screw SSD onto the case. Next, replace cover, screw in antenna, and plug in power adapter. Plug the PC into a power source, connect to a TV or monitor, power on, and if you get this screen, your build is complete. You can go ahead and install the OS of your choice. All right guys, that's all that I have. That's one of the easiest HTPC builds that I've ever done. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more HTPC stuff and comment below if you have any questions or anything you would like to say. Thank you for watching. Peace.